Hi Chris here and welcome to my TechLast X16 Android hands-on video. So I've just started up the ROM and I haven't actually made any major changes to it just to let you see what it looks like. So we've got a lot of bloatware that's already pre-installed here and you can see this is the typical TechLast stock launcher that they use. There is no apps drawer, it's all just on one screen. So widgets actually all in the same thing. Now personally I'd love them just to go with a stock Android 5. I mean why can't they do that? They could do that and they could also just let us install the apps that we want instead of bloating it up. But obviously they like using their own launcher. It'll probably save them a lot of time as well just to go with Android stock launcher. But anyway, so most of these apps here we can just drag and remove them and install them here. Of course you can go through the settings menu, go over to apps and then just go running through all of these junky bloatware apps that aren't relevant to us outside of China anyway. Not all of them can be uninstalled, but you can go through and get rid of literally 95% of them, which isn't too bad at all. Now, while I have this screen up, I'll just show you the amount of free RAM we have available. So we've got three gigabytes of RAM free, and that's plenty for Android. I mean, we can go crazy with four gigabytes of RAM. You can do a huge amount of multitasking. I only the note. 5 has 4 gigabytes when it comes to phones and I think maybe there could be another couple of other models. So I did do some benchmarks. I did uh, actually do a few tests and I'll show you the results. I can just go over now to the gallery and just run through some of them. So the first one I did was Geekbench 3. This is the score here. Not a bad score at all. So that compares to the Galaxy S5 and multi-core score, not too bad the result. And Antutu, 52,000. Just some further information there, you can see Android 5.1, 64-bit. iStorm maxed out of course. Storm Extreme, maxed out as well. Storm Unlimited, 24,000, not a bad score. There's the Slingshot score. Again, those scores are pretty good. Now, Epic Citadel running 1080p on the ultra high quality setting. Almost 60 frames a second. It's the fastest you can get average FPS frames per second there. Very fluid, very smooth, and it looks great. It's quite a demanding benchmark, that one. So those were the benchmarks that I've run on that. Now there is uh, just a couple of other things that I also just wanted to point out with the ROM. So we do have the option here, boot to Windows, just right here. That's me moving the icon around, touching the screen at the moment and capturing this. And I've actually just lost the icon. Where did it go? There it is. So if you tap on this and select yes, then you'll go straight into Windows. You can also swipe down from the top. No, you can't. It's not there, sorry. At hold the power button. And there's also the option boot to Windows. Now, Teclas do have their over-the-air update system. I'm on the latest ROM. I have updated that. Android itself looks okay. The DPI does make the logos you can see, the icons here, sorry, very large on the screen. So I'm not particularly too fond of it. It seems a little bit larger. Maybe they could have used another DPI to size things down a little bit and not have everything just so massive on the screen. Anyway, you'll see up there, right here, there's 30 degrees. This here is uh, just a app there to monitor the temperatures. So I've been running that the whole time. And I'll keep that up there all the time during my gaming test. So you can see just how warm the CPU is getting and the chipset gets there, the GPU and the CPU combined. Let's show you CPU is... So you can see the scale is interactive and it's, uh, it's clocks right down there, but it can clock up to 2.24 gigahertz. Just quickly go through these screens for those interested. So one of the thermals is coming up with 46. I do not actually know what that sensor is referring to. 
the onboard sensors, just the accelerometer. That's all it really needs. So I'm just going to go through some gaming now and we'll see how those tests run, the gaming tests run on the tablet. Just received a new bounty contract. Combat X, this is probably one of the most demanding titles and can make some of the systems completely come to a standstill and almost become slideshows. Running very fluid on the X16 Pro here. Here is Eternity Warriors 4. See, the lobby's a little bit laggy. But that happens pretty much in every single system, even happens in Windows 2 5. quickly demonstrate here the speakers something I can't show you with the capture card so just play a track in YouTube So that was 100% volume there. There's a slight little bit of distortion when you turn it right up really loud, but overall it sounds better than the X98 Air 3 and the X98 Pro. And this is the screen brightness at 0%, well the lowest setting on Android. I'll just turn that up right now to the maximum level. There you can see it's quite a bright screen. 
and their viewing angles quite good just looking around it's an IPS panel so it doesn't look bad at all and the brightness I think should be fine definitely for indoor use it's perfectly fine outdoors these screens tend to reflect a lot so it's probably not going to be it's definitely not that you can use outdoors and that's just about I'd say about 25% maybe there the brightness Overall, the screen brightness, I'm happy with it. I don't think it's a dull screen at all. It might have looked a little bit dull in some of the other videos, my first unboxing video, because there were a lot of res reflections coming off the screen protector on it, I think. So from just those games there that I tested, you can see that it handles gaming really well. The X16 Pro, then even the most demanding Android games there are fully playable. Very good frame rates, are very smooth. All the games are tested, and I don't think it's going to have any problems playing latest titles in the next year or two they come out even more demanding i think the atom x 5 z 8500 is going to handle that quite easily just before i end the video i just wanted to quickly show you how well the browser performs and you see that scrolling is very smooth very fast uh, because everything's so big on the screen you do have a limited actual viewing area of the websites the pages there which is a bit of a shame and clicking on links and things on the screen is very easy because probably because things are so big too and large but the touch response loading times as you can see there quite good and this is of course a slightly heavy website because I do have embedded videos a lot of images it's not exactly the lightest web page let's play this YouTube video that's embedded Hi guys, Chris from Tech Tablets here with the, the X16 Pro from TechLast. So that works fine. So just head over now and test out bbc.com. Haven't loaded this up, so we'll see how fast it takes to render the page. Never been there before, so I hadn't been cached or anything. That's not bad at all. Uh, some of those images are still loading in. And this isn't exactly a particularly light website either. There's a lot of images on the screen you can see I'm just scrolling with my finger here that works pretty well and there's a little bit of catch up there you see the images there but it's very smooth very fast so browsing on the X16 Pro isn't bad at all but I prefer using Windows Edge or Internet Explorer Firefox Chrome you've got a few more options Within Android, of course, that's just the stock browser that's included, but you could load in Chrome and use other various browsers there. So overall, the performance in Android is very good. Uh, the ROM itself, you can see, I'm not particularly, as I mentioned in the beginning, fond of the way they have their launcher to last. I think they could easily just go with a stock uh, launcher, the Nexus sort of style, just a stock Android. Temperatures were really good throughout my entire testing process. If you Keep an eye out on the tiny little uh, overlay that's been floating around on all of the videos, well, especially with the gaming tests. Uh, you would have seen that uh, those temperatures have been really good throughout the whole time. So the, uh, the real test will be Windows, of course, where the CPU tends to get quite hot, which I'll move on to Windows now and start doing my benchmarks and tests and that. Thank you for watching the video. Hopefully see you in the upcoming videos in the channel with the X16 playlist where I will be testing out and doing my hands on in Windows soon.